let me introduce an idea that we call RadTech. And this idea focuses on downside risk. So usually portfolios are evaluated with respect to a benchmark. And the risk is also evaluated with respect to the benchmark. You look at the deviation of the return of the portfolio and the benchmark, and then look at the standard deviation or volatility. And we call that tracking error. I've long thought that was a bad idea. And the intuition is very straightforward. You could have a portfolio manager that beats the benchmark every month, but is penalized in terms of tracking error. Because tracking error doesn't matter if you're above or below the benchmark. Everything's equal. So I think it's more reasonable to actually think about maximizing the good tracking error when you're beating the benchmark and minimizing the bad tracking error when you're below. And our technique, which we call RadTech, operates on that downside. So let me give an application and uh, before I go through the mechanics, and this is value. So value is very impressive over the very long term. So it beats growth, it beats cap weight over the long term, but it's subject to these long periods of underperformance. And you can see this. Uh, think of the, the green as the Russell value uh, index. So now I'm going to add the risk managed value in black. And you can see that it's a much smoother ride. The drawdowns are substantially reduced. So how do we do this? And I think the basic idea is straightforward. So number one, you set a downside tracking error budget. So downside tracking error, you just look at the periods where you underperform and take the volatility. So you set the budget, let's say 2%. You need a horizon to, uh, you choose it. Um, whether it's two years, one year, six months, let's say it's 12 months. So number two, look back 11 months and actually calculate the downside tracking error. And then ask the question, how bad of a return for my portfolio, how bad does it need to be in the next month, the 12th month, for me to exceed my downside tracking error budget? And maybe you figure out that it's minus 3% or less. Okay, so the next thing, step three, figure out what the probability is of getting a minus 3% return or worse. And the, the next part is to set the weight. So if the portfolio is expected uh, to have a minus 3% or less return, then you allocate more towards the benchmark. If the probability is really small that you're going to get a minus 3% or worse, then you stick with your risky uh, portfolio. So this is the essential idea. So let me talk about a couple of applications. Value is one we've seen already, but this is a different way of looking at it. It's year by year. And it is clear in this graphic. Look at the red circles, and you can see the downside improvement that this risk-managed uh, strategy delivers. It also delivers higher expected returns. Uh, and the Sortino ratio doubles. Sortino ratio is the excess return divided by the downside tracking error. And I think this is the right way to look at the expected return and risk uh, trade-off. So this is a value application where we're kind of switching between value and the benchmark, which is cap weighted. Well, what about taking advantage of the fact that value and growth are negatively correlated? So if value is expected to underperform, switch into growth. So we call this value and growth opportunities. And you can see that this graphic speaks for itself. The black is the value and growth opportunities. So here, the expected returns are much higher than a standalone value or a standalone uh, growth investment. The drawdowns are evidently sharply uh, reduced. And the Sorkino ratio, in this case, uh, it, it almost triples. So these are just a couple of applications of this technique. Usually in a risk managed uh, technique, you need to take a haircut in terms of expected returns, not in this case. And the idea is we are just capturing 
uh, the negative relation between expected returns and volatility and the persistence of volatility, more specifically, the persistence of downside volatility. And finally, I've shown two applications. Uh, this is a general technique we can apply to many different investment styles.